Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. Today, guys, we're doing an Asian Cup review, uh, Asian Cup re reaction to the two games. So, of course, it's me, AD744. Today, guys, we're doing this. So, let's start with the first game we got here is Uzbekistan 2, Thailand 1. Wow, Uzbekistan, man. This is a team that plays so good football. And you can see the combination of play with this team because this team is just so well organized, especially their attack. Their attack is so dangerous. They're so firepower. For Thailand in this game, for large parts of this game, they were not great. I mean, as you can see right here, guys, in the first half, they didn't even get a single shot. I'm sorry, they only had one shot. And Uzbekistan were great, man. I look at that pass for that first goal, man. What a pass that is from Didi Okomo. Great, great pass for uh, Toganov. And it was a great ball over the top. Great, great ball over the top. And he scores, man. Now, Thailand did equalize in the second half with a great, great individual effort there from long distance. A great, great solo goal there. Uh, coming up the bench star chart, uh, they had a much better second half. And then that goal, Uzbekistan scored the 65th minute, which turned out to be the winning goal. Fazil, man, that assist from Master Pro, what assist that was. That was a great, great assist. Great control there, ball control there. Fazil scored. This Fazil guy is an amazing player. This is a brilliant young player. I'm really hoping that he can um, blossom. And I, I want to I see him in Europe someday because I think this guy has uh, talent. Like, I mean, look at his age right here. Let's see. He's 20 years old, CSK in Moscow. He needs to move. He needs to leave CSK Moscow. Let's be real. I think maybe in the summer window, um, he can maybe come to the top five leagues. You know, maybe be league on the league. I think that would be great for him. And for Uzbekistan, man, this is incredible for them. As for Thailand's game, they just couldn't compete. They couldn't compete for this game. They had a better second half though, much better. The substitutions I think made a difference. Like Muanta, um, Sarchet, Borkov, Aruta. But the thing is, they just didn't have enough quality. They didn't have enough quality to finish off the game. And even though Uzbekistan weren't really that great in the second half, um, that first half performance was just too good. And so Uzbekistan, for me, they just have the better attack. And for Thailand, man, shout out to Thailand. Thailand did really well um, to advance from this group, you know. Um, and I think you see the problem with this uh, uh, Thailand team is that um, there's just not enough attacking qualities. Like, I feel like they need more players in the final third. Like, I feel like without Jadid, their main striker, just to have a good game, you know. And I think he's such a big difference maker, and he's so, so important. For Uzbekistan, man, Congratulations to them. They're in the quarterfinals, and they'll be playing. Um, they'll be playing against Qatar and the quarterfinals. And honestly, I think Uzbekistan have a good chance. I, th th it's it's a winnable game. It is winnable. It's not too far fetched to say they can win that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the other game we got here. It is Korea one. I mean Saudi Arabia one. South Korea. Saudi Arabia one. South Korea one. Wow. Insane game. This was by one of the most craziest games I've seen in my life. Like, because if you look at the first half in particular, it was a very dull game. Eh, not really too good. South Korea had their chances, but not really anything too dangerous. Now, to be fair, Saudi did almost open the score in the 40th minute. They had a flurry of chances from the corner. I believe it hit the post like three times um, in consecutive uh, succession. But yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, there wasn't anything else. And second half, man, Saudi came alive. Saudi came alive. Great, great substitution from Roberto Mancini, bringing a Hadi Radif. Taking off Al Shawari and he scored. He scored coming off the bench, scored the goal. Great, great combination play. Al Dasari got the assist there. And then, and then afterwards, man, Korea, Saudi Arabia started to penetrate to create chances, but you could tell that they were being defensive. They were like, okay, you know what? We'll just rest on this 1 0 lead. As for South Korea, they started pushing. They started pushing desperately for the goal and they started to come alive, especially in the second half in the 70th minute. When Jurgen Klinsmann finally made the decisions changes, and I think this substitution saved him on the day. Wong Hee Chan, uh, Cho coming off the bench, and then Yo Wong Park. Right, they had a flurry amount of chances and extra time. Uh, sorry, stoppage time. Um, Kasser, the goalkeeper, came up clutch, and there were so many chances. I believe Cho hit the crossbar once, and then he finally scored. Man, finally scored. Great, great cross in from Seal, and. Yeah, man, Um, for South Korea, man, and that Cho guy, just don't, Cho guy was so awful in the group stage, and yet he came a clutch in the knockout stage, a huge, huge goal for him and the knockouts, and you have to give him credit, man, because this was a guy I've been, I was very critical of, not very huge fan of, and then the second half, man, Um, an extra time, you could tell, I think you could tell that Saudi were kind of pushing for penalties, Korea were trying to get the winner there, there was a huge, huge chance that um, the goalkeeper, I think, made the mistake there, and, this, uh, and the South Korea almost scored, but he made a pass instead, so... And then the second half extra night, once again, uh, there was a really, really good chance for Saudi Arabia to steal at the end with a great, great save from uh, Cho, man. And Cho came a clutch today, man. He made some good saves, but Castell was definitely the better goalkeeper. And coming into penalties, 
I was worried for South Korea. I was worried for South Korea. I wasn't sure if they were going to win this because just on the basis of this game, I feel like Kassar is just a really good goalkeeper. You look at what he did um, in the regulation making those saves. But, there, you know, people, you know, there's a difference between saving penalties and saving shots. And you could tell that Cho was a more experienced goalkeeper when he came to saving shots. And those penalties, man, from Saudi, man. On that G, Graib, uh, which is bad penalties, bad penalties, way too easy to save. And for uh, South Korea, man, they got the job done. All the guys scored their penalties. And for Saudi Arabia, man, my big criticism I have with them is that they went too defensive. After taking the lead, they went extremely pragmatic, tried to park the bus and try to see out the game, but it just didn't work. It was kind of like what Senegal did against Ivory Coast, uh, where basically they basically parked the bus and, you know, trying to hit on the counterattack and they were pushing for penalties. They were pushing for penalties. You know, uh, another big criticism. So, yeah, individual players that stood out to me. I thought Ajami, but the center back was fantastic. He was a man marking everyone. He was so good today. Fantastic performance for him. Um, I thought Kassar was really good. And that's pretty much about it. And obviously, the substitution, uh, Radif was also good as well. Aldasari, man, once again, not effective enough. You know, Aldasari, man, I, I like with this new Saudi team, it just doesn't look the same player he was under um, Harvey Renard. As for South Korea, I thought for me, um, Cho was amazing. I thought Son had a good game, even though he didn't score. You could tell he was really trying. He was really, really trying to get his teammates. And you could tell he was being more creative in this game, you know, with the amount of passes he did and everything. He tried his best, but just, I just you know, like I said, just couldn't get on the end of it. I thought um, I thought Kim and Jay, excellent defensively. Cho was obviously great as well. I, you have to give credit to midfield. I thought the midfield was great. And for Jurgen Klinsmann, man, he lives for another day. Because let me just say this right now. Jurgen Klinsmann. You're going to have to improve tactically if you want to beat Australia because this kind of rocky start just didn't work, you know. And you have, you have, you have to be – you have to be. he is somewhat fortunate that Saudi Arabia went defensive because if Saudi Arabia didn't go defensive, they could have killed this game off. They could have finished the game off the second half. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm happy for South Korea. They got the job done, and they're going to have a rematch against Australia in the Asian Cup quarterfinals. And remember, guys, Australia defeated them in the Asian Cup final uh, nine years ago. So this is the chance to get revenge. For um, South Korea, man, and now, like I said, man, if South Korea can get the job done. They have a very, they have a favorable opponent in the uh, semifinal, of course, and now they could potentially play against Jordan again, which would be interesting. But yeah, anyways, I think I'm going off a bit off a tangent, so I think I'm gonna wrap things up here. So if you guys did enjoy this video, guys, please remember to like and subscribe, of course, and let me know what you guys think of these games, man, because we had some crazy end games today. So please remember to like and subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.